You've probably seen the videos of Atlas, the Boston Dynamics robot uh, that is bipedal, five foot nine, 180 pounds, very close to being a human-sized mm. uh, and shaped robot, uh, being pushed around, slapped around, uh, having their sweet, sweet box slapped <laughs> away. It seemed pretty cruel, but they're just testing this robot for uh, future use for, well, we'll get into that soon. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a very interesting video, uh, and you do feel kind of bad for the robot. But you have to remember, the robot isn't being bullied. Uh, the robot is being tested. Mm -hmm. So uh, perhaps someone could harass that robot in a situation where they were moving boxes or they were, you know, working for the military. Yeah. So something people haven't really uh, maybe considered all the way is that after uh, Google, well, Alphabet now, uh, bought uh, Boston Dynamics, uh, it was no longer taking military contracts from DARPA or what have you. And people thought, oh, that's all right. Uh, but technology is a two-way street. There is a, a recycling of uh, private sector and public sector uh, usage. So uh, sometimes when funding goes down for uh, public sector R&D, for uh, let's say robotics yeah. or military usage, uh, they do rely on the private sector to uh, work on those kinks for them. And then it is, it is profitable for the private sector, but the public sector, the, the military, could any time take that back and um, reuse the technology or use it to inspire a greater technology or a more applied technology for what they're uh, looking for, sp specifically for DARPA-related activities. So basically, uh, Atlas, the robot, can enlist in the military whenever. Yes. Whenever. <laughs> so that'll be fun. So yeah, I, I agree. It's like it, it said it's a two-way street, but it basically with the, they're trying to cut funding for uh, defense systems, right? Mm -hmm. So they're trying to cut funding for that. So therefore, private sector would take over and suddenly start portraying, uh, trying to, con I would say, pursue what they want in terms of military use. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of overshadowed as private funding, but then mm -hmm. the public funding, public sector could come in specifically for military use and be like, okay, well, we need this. Because we've seen that before with the Bo Boston Dynamics. What was it called again? The Big Dog? Big Dog. Well, the, they weren't happy with what, where Big Dog was. It's too loud. Big yeah. Dog was just was a little too cocky. They needed when something was in a little bit more quiet for the battlefield. Yes. Um, and the it's a lot of it is relying on the private sector to pick that up and to work on it more, Adjust and it. then come up with something without using their money, and that they could eventually uh, reincorporate or yes. refold in. Yeah, and I mean, it's so again, it's is that two way street where it, how like whether or not how encouraged we are by this, right? So I've just taken the overall stance that if we can think of new and uh, exciting technological ways to, to reduce how much humans are actually directly involved in the mm -hmm. battlefield. I'm all for that. Like, there's far too many lives lost in war. So, but the same thing comes is like so then these, we do these have machines. like issues with you know uh, with Obama sending out killer drones and then yes. killing way that's way exactly, too many civilians. That's like, exactly it, what I'm saying. And the other uh, obvious civil rights issues that go in with that. Yeah. So it's just this over reliance versus uh, the cost of human yeah. lives of yep. soldiers, which obviously we want to protect, yeah. but we don't want to take it too far in the other up, uh, direction. Um, the biggest concern for the future, though, is making sure that the robots are, in fact, autonomous or yeah. that humans are out of the loop. So if a robot has a problem, it would be able to correct itself yeah. rather than human intervention uh, going into that. And we're not at that point yet, as you can see from the Atlas video. Yeah. Uh, but we're getting damn close. Yes. Eerily close, even, if you may. Uh, so it's it's something interesting to think about. It's, it's not necessarily completely consumer-based at no. this point at all. Yeah, and, it, and you made a good point. That's the thing is that these machines are designed, um, if they're going to be designed for military use, it's going to be designed to specifically seek out a target and eliminate it. But at the same time, what we've experienced so far with drones, there hasn't been an overwhelming amount of success with drones. And as you mentioned, they have been killing an enormous amount of civilians and not finding their target as accurately as one would expect. And whilst you're trying to remove human use, Mm -hmm. you're also putting more humans at risk because yeah. of the mechanical side of it and how it's not been targeted. So in we're the same enabling time, war crimes in a way. Yes. So you're, you're, if there is a way to, 
All right, my robot fights your robot. Do what they used to do in the old Trojan days, where they have the major, the major boss of each, or the major fighter of each group fight each other. That would be a more civil war, but I doubt very much we'll ever get well, to that point. Unfortunately, that's not the reality. Robot wars that's, will solve war. That's more of a dream yes, than a reality a of that has been reflected so far. Perhaps that could change. Perhaps that will never change. <laughs> Audience, what do you think? Let us know below in the comments, and please like and subscribe for more.